Hi everybody, I'm Julia. Welcome back to Julia at Home. Today's video is on my favorite math games. Now, I have a lot of games in general and uh, we have a lot of math games. And so I did ask my kids what some of their favorites are. So the, those are in here. And I found some of my favorites and I came up with 10 games to share with you. This is obviously not an exhaustive list. I do not have all the great math games that are out there. And these aren't even all the ones that I have. But these are ones that you might want to look at if you have elementary age children. I've used these with as young as preschoolers. And my oldest right now is in second grade. And many of these will take us much farther as far as her interest and in practicing math. So, um, but really... I would say core age is like early elementary, first through third grade, as far as the skills we are practicing here. It's going to depend on where your child is in their math development. Everyone is a little bit different. So let me just get started. Okay, so this might be cheating a little bit, but the first is just a normal deck of cards. This just happens to be a tree playing card deck because it was what was closest to me. <laughs> um, and I like trees, but it's just, it's just a playing card deck, you know, with the numbers and all that. So, um... Uh, <laughs> there's a couple games actually that I really like to play with this. I'd say war is one where you're who you put, you both put down, you're playing two people. You both put down a card. Whoever has the highest number keeps it. Um, you could also play for lower number and, um, also go fish is a great one. And that's great for recognizing numbers, especially. So these are great for the younger kids. There's also, you know, as you learn more card games, they are all great math practice for the most part. Um, so get yourself a deck of cards and it'll go a long way. So that one was very general, but these are more specific. So this is IC10. And what this has is it has little um, circles. I wanted to call them little chips. And they have sea animals on one side and most of them have numbers on the other. Some of them have sharks, um, which is like a gameplay thing. Um, but the, the goal is to find numbers that add up to 10. So two and eight, five and five, six and four, things like that. And this this is great practice for kids. You could try to, to add up to other things too if you were working specifically. Let's say you're just working on adding up to six and you could look for that. Um, but I've, I've just used it for 10 or just for fun to play with. My son really enjoys it. This is a really good level for him right now. He's in kindergarten. Um, but again, it depends on where you are. Um, I think every child is a little bit different in their math development. So especially if you're homeschooling, you can go at their pace, find out when it's good for them. But this is by Learning Resources. It says ages six plus and grades one plus. Um, again, I'm using it with my, I've used it quite a bit with my kindergartner who just turned six. So he was using it when he was five. Um, and I recommend it for, you know, I think you could get it for a preschooler kindergartner and it'd be great. Quirkle. So this doesn't have any numbers in it. These are just pattern tiles. So all these colors and shapes you see here um, are on little tiles and it's, it's basically recognizing colors and shapes and patterns, which is a really early skill that leads into more math. So um, this, again, would be great. This is great for preschoolers, but you can use it on up. And I have this little travel version. I'm trying to show you some of these tiles. Like, they're not toddler safe, right? So, so preschoolers that aren't putting things in their mouths, maybe starting at age four. So um, you could probably do this with a three-year-old. But I have a little travel case because this would be great to bring with you to, like, I want to say you could bring it to a restaurant to do as long as your kids aren't going to swipe it off the table, which my toddler would do. But um, yeah, like it could be a great game for on the go. And you're practicing those patterning and um, shape recognition, which is early math. This game unabashedly does not hide that it is a math game. This is Sun Swamp and you're going through a swamp and you have to add or subtract your way there. And there's dice for numbers and dice with the add or subtract. Um, on there and so uh, this one also says five plus I, I've played this with preschoolers they just need more help um, I think part of it is I have my son is just two years um, behind my daughter and so if she's playing something with us he's gonna want to play and I'm not gonna say no so I just give him a little bit more help but they're both at the age now where they can both play this really well and what I normally do for the younger kids is I'll actually pull out some manipulatives and um, we'll use those to, to put out and either add or subtract from for the younger kids. My daughter, who is now in second grade, no longer needs those, and so she'll do it in her head, which is also great practice. Um, but I, I like to make my son count it out still because I think that's really useful. This is also learning resources. They have really good games. I really like their 
stuff and it's good quality too like they're sturdy games and the pieces um here let me show you the pieces of this one are actually cute little animals there's a frog and a, i don't know if it's a crocodile or animal i just dropped it a dragonfly and a snail um so they're really cute and i think maybe the the cute animals and the swamp are enough to overcome the fact that it is blatantly math. I don't know. My kids asked to do it though, and it was on their favorites list. Next, we have Dino Math Tracks. So this is a place value math game. Honestly, um, it, it can work even if you haven't really covered place value because you just count that many out. Um, so, and, and it's basic math. I got this when my daughter was in preschool because she really liked dinosaurs and it looked interesting. And we've played it many times. It's not on my favorites list, but she listed it as one of her favorites. So there you go. It has different levels of challenge, so that's good. We've mostly just used it on the easiest level and we, I should probably come back now to the harder levels because she's definitely ready for them. Okay, the rest of these games are definitely increasing in um, difficulty and, and probably aren't preschool level. Um, my son still plays with us, but he does need help with almost all of these ones. The first one I'm gonna show you is Sleeping Queens. And um, this is great. This was actually invented um, by a young girl, I want to say probably around the age of eight or nine um, with her family. And it's, it, I'm not going to go into the whole gameplay, um, but basically you're adding up, you're getting queens in various ways, and you want to be the first to get to either 50 points or 40 points. So you have to add up what your queens are worth. They're various, I think there's like 10, 15, 20 points um, depending on the queen. So um, that's Sleeping Queens. Um, and that's by Game Right, which is another great game company for educational games. Also by them is Zeus on the Loose. This is my husband's favorite math game that we have, so I have to put it in here. Um, it is cards with mainly numbers, but all, there's also some um, Greek god cards. I think I got it when we were doing ancient um, our ancient unit studies and we were doing ancient Greece because it, it's an ancient, <laughs> it's, it's a math game set in ancient Greece, essentially set. Oh, that's so good. Though. It's a card game and you got cards with numbers, but there's also some Greek gods and goddesses in here that do different things. And then you've got Zeus here and the goal is to have Zeus at the end of the game, but it moves around. He moves around quite a bit. Um, when you get to a um, multiple of 10 if you get a certain, if you use a certain God card. Um, but the idea is to be, to get to, either get to 100 exactly and you win, or if you're holding on to Zeus when 100 is surpassed, then you get Zeus. Um, so it's a little bit tricky and it moves really fast, but it's really fun. Um, my kids are getting better at it. Um, it's a little tricky for them, but yeah, um, I really enjoy it. So I would recommend this. This is another that my daughter said I had to include. This is one of her new favorites. This is Pet Me. Uh, it's um, a division game, but I do it with my son helping him out too. You don't need to know your division facts to do this game. So the idea is that you're feeding animals and you get a card with a certain number of like dog bones and then you you land at a spot with a certain number of dogs and you have to see how many dogs get each bone. Um, and so there are little like bone cards that we will put out, we'll like take out as many as we, we need and then put them out and count. So you don't have to know, you know, that 12 divided by three is four. You just take 12, put them out by three and you will get a little stack of four. And so you get your answer. Um, and there are some ways to make it more or less challenging and some variations. Um, but I have played it with both my kids together and helped my son. And um, she really enjoys it. If your kids like animals like mine do, boy, just animals in a game, that's going to be a seller for them. So that's Pet Me. Okay, two more. And these are not as obvious um, math games, but these are just really fun games, even if you're an adult. So the first one here is Dragonwood. And it's, just, it's a card game and you're um, capturing things or fighting things and getting points. And um, there's dragons at the end. There's two dragons, I believe, that are a lot more points. And once you get both those dragons, once both those dragons are, I don't know if it's like you're capturing them or what you're doing, what the language is, but um, once they're, they're taken, then the game's over um, and you add up your points at the end. So it's not one where you're actively sitting there adding like some swamp, but 
you're wanting to get the most points. So you do have to look at how much cards are worth. And there's also an element of um, dice rolling in order to get the cards. That requires counting how much you have and knowing which number is more than another number. So there's a lot of math practice that happens in this game that's actually probably challenging. So this is probably not like a preschool level game. I think we did play it with my son when he was in preschool because I got it as a family game. Um, I think I got it for my husband actually. And um, we do play it together and they really enjoy it. We just help them out more. Um, but so if, but if you do have, you know, an elementary age student, um, this says age is eight plus. Um, reading is helpful. We read for our kids. I mean, I would say like six plus would be what I would say. I always kind of go younger than, than the games do. Um, but yeah, probably like first, first grade and up is what I would say, but it's definitely on the more difficult side. The last one is a newer one for us. This is King Domino. Um, I got it for my kids for Christmas and um, we've really enjoyed it. We've played it many times now. You're not necessarily doing math wall. Okay, it's a little hard to describe. <laughs> so basically in the game, you're putting down tiles of different, um, oh, I can't think of the word I want. Hold on, terrain types. So you're putting down tiles of different terrain types and they also have, um, what are they called? Crowns. And some of them have crowns and some of them don't. At the end of the game, any grouping of terrain types and crowns, you multiply the number of crowns by the number of tiles you have of that terrain type in a grouping, if that makes any sense. Hopefully that makes some sense. I, I, it's hard to explain without playing the game. Maybe I'll show you some footage. So at the end of the game, you have to do multiplication basically to add up the points. And as you play more, you learn when you're choosing which tiles to take to kind of in your mind look, okay, which one of these is going to be worth more points to me at the end. And so you, you kind of, if you're playing it well and strategically, you are also doing that math during the course of the game. I don't know if my kids are there yet or if they're just, you know, Oh, I need more of that tile. Um, but we're, we're getting there and we all really enjoy it. So I did want to share it with you. King Domino. There is a harder version, I believe, called Queen Domino. So I might at some point get that too because we enjoy this one so much. But for right now, this is the perfect level for us. So if you have elementary age kids, this is the one to go with. So those were 10 of my favorite math games. I wonder if you have any of the same favorites or different favorites. Please comment below. Uh, love to get comments. Love to hear from you what you're playing with your kids, especially at this time of year when homeschooling can feel like a bit of a slog. Pulling out some games is a great way to practice math and have fun and just relax a little bit. If you like this video, please remember to hit that thumbs up button below because it lets YouTube know that you liked it. And also subscribe if you haven't already and you wanna see more videos. I hope you are all well. Talk to you later, friends.